Do you remember any other reason for such great mortality among Soviet prisoners of war? I didn't know the reasons for this mass murder, but they seem to be completely wrong. That I do know. Now, von Ribbentrop. Are you telling the tribunal on your oath that you knew nothing about the effect of military pressure on Austria? I wish to stress again that I knew nothing about military measures and that if I had known something, I wouldn't see any reason not to say so. But it is a fact that during the days before and after the hitler schuschnigg meeting, I was so busy taking over the foreign office that I could give only slight attention to the Austrian problem. Then Goering is cross-examined. At the end of the meeting, you used the following words, didn't you? German Jewry must, as a penalty, forfeit one billion marks. Then the pigs won't commit any more crimes. Jawohl. Do you still say that neither Hitler nor you knew of the policy to exterminate the Jews? So weit es mich betrifft, I already have said that not even approximately did I know to what degree this thing took place. You did not know to what degree, but you knew there was a policy that aimed at the liquidation of the Jews. No, not liquidation of the Jews. I only knew that certain perpetrations had taken place. Spare takes the stand. You were present on April 23rd, 1945, when Hitler received the telegram from Goering suggesting that he take over power. What did Hitler say on that occasion? Hitler was also ordentlich erregt über den Inhalt dieses Telegrammes. Hitler was most excited about the contents of the telegram, and he expressed himself in a very clear manner about Goering. He said that he knew for some time that Goering had failed, that he was corrupt, that he was a drug addict. It was typical of Hitler's attitude toward the entire problem, however, that he followed this statement up by saying, but he can nevertheless negotiate the capitulation. He stated in an offhand manner, it doesn't really matter who does it. His disregard for the German nation was expressed in the way he said this. After months of examination and cross-examination, several defendants make final statements to the tribunal. Frank is first. I myself, speaking from the very depth of my sentiments and from the experience of five months of this trial, want to say this. Now that I have gained the last insight into all that which has been committed in the way of dreadful atrocities, I feel a terrible guilt within me. Funk declares. When these measures of terror and violence against Jews were put up to me, I suffered a nervous breakdown, because at the moment it came to my mind with full clearness that from here on the catastrophe took its course all the way up to the terrible and atrocious things about which we have heard, and about which I knew only in part at the time of my imprisonment. I felt ashamed and guilty at that moment, and I feel the same way today, but it's too late. Now Schirach speaks. It is my guilt that I educated German youth for a man who committed murders millionfold. Schacht is next. Denn er hat alles, was er vorher dem deutschen Volke und damit auch mir versprochen hatte. Everything he promised to the German people and thereby to himself, he did not afterwards keep. He promised equal rights for all citizens, and without regard to their capabilities, his adherents got privileges before all other citizens. He promised to fight against political lies, and together with his minister Goebbels and by himself, he never did anything but disseminate political lies and political fraud. 
He released criminals and put them into his service. He did everything in a way of not keeping his promises. He deceived the world, Germany and me. Spare once more. The tremendous danger contained in this totalitarian system only became really clear the moment we were approaching the end. Everything that has happened during this trial, everything you have seen in the way of orders which were carried out without any hesitation, did after all turn out to be mistaken. That is why this trial must contribute to the prevention of such distorted wars in the future and to the establishment of principles for human cooperation. Keitel again. I have geirrt. Und war nicht imstande, I erred. I was not able to prevent what should have been prevented. That is my guilt. I can only wish that out of a clear recognition of the causes, of the disastrous methods and the terrible consequences of this war, there will arise for the German people a new hope for a better future and the community of nations. Now, Frank. We call on the German people, whose representatives we were, to abandon this way, which was doomed to failure in the will and justice of God, and which is doomed for everyone who may try to follow it anywhere in the world. The last defendant to speak is Fritsche. You, of the prosecution, did not expect anything good from Hitler, and you are amazed about the extent of what really happened. But then try to understand the indignation of those who did expect something good from Hitler and were betrayed. I am one of these betrayed. Finally, both defense and prosecution sum up their arguments for the tribunal. An aggressor can be branded only by the world's conscience. That supreme organ of humanity must have not only real, but also moral authority. Its impartial judgment must be looked upon with general confidence. It must stand above the contesting parties. In the name of the United States of America, Justice Jackson delivers his summation. <laughs> 